Good morning. Ooh. The Lord be with you this morning uh, as you join for worship. I hope this will be a meaningful time of worship for you today, whether you are here in person or joining online. It is a joy to be with you. If you have a prayer request you would like lifted up this morning, there are a number of ways you can do that. For those of you here in person, you can scan the QR code in your announcements insert and that will uh, create a text box which will come directly to me. You can also text me or message me directly. Uh, if you're joining online, you can put it on Facebook or Zoom in the chat and I'll watch those and we'll also have a time of sharing later in the service. And if you have um, a prayer request throughout the week that you think we should know about, please let us know. Or if you have any other pastoral need, please let us know. Uh, because of HIPAA regulations, the hospital doesn't call us if somebody is there. They're, they're not legally allowed to. And so sometimes we just don't know. Uh, and so if you know of somebody who is ill or in need of a visit, uh, if you yourself are in need of a visit, please let us know. You can call me, you can call Mark Davis, uh, or you can call the church office. We um, want to make sure that we're giving you all the care that you need. Our chancel flowers this morning were given with love in memory of Jean Anderson by the Anderson family. And speaking of the Anderson family, I don't know if you all saw the butler Eagle, but John had a wonderful, there was a wonderful article about him and the Eagle. Uh, and John has it, has the paper here today, uh, celebrating, uh, celebrating a wonderful career as principal of one room schoolhouses. So if you haven't read that, I encourage you to uh, look that up and we celebrate with you, John. Wonderful. <laughs> Thanks to those who are helping with worship this morning on the organ is Nancy Slezak. Our technical director this morning is Ashton Ruby and our liturgist is Lauren McElhaney. Uh, today in worship, we will be having a congregational meeting for the purpose of electing new officers, elders and deacons, as well as nominating committee at large members. And so if you're not a member of the congregation, it's fine. It'll take two minutes, uh, but uh, we will do that. And then we will also install our newly elected officers today as well. Following worship, we do have fellowship hour, and my family brought the food this week, so please eat it so we don't have to take it home. If you uh, enjoy fellowship hour, it would be great if you could sign up to host one Sunday. There's a sign-up sheet on the uh, deacon's table and a, a brand new one. Yeah, so lots of slots are open. Through February. Ooh, we can plan ahead. And it doesn't have to be anything fancy. Uh, Vacation Bible School is continuing this week. We have two weeks left at the Pine Shelter at Alameda Park. All kids are welcome Wednesday evening from 6 to 8. We've been having a lot of fun. And um, even if you haven't come, if you haven't had kids who come, the last night especially, they're going to want to come because there's something exciting happening. Uh, but we would love to see them. And then I will be on vacation uh, starting Thursday through next Tuesday. I'll be away the 18th through the 23rd. Our family is headed to Washington, D.C. For, uh, some, to, for being tourists is what we're doing. Uh, so if you have a need in that time, please give Mark Davis a call or the church office. And Mark will be filling in for me next Sunday, but I'll be here, but I won't be here and you'll see what I mean next Sunday. If you have a church key that you are no longer using, uh, we would love if you would turn it back in to us. You can either bring it to Ellen in the office or give it to Pete McElhaney. There's also a lot of items around the church that people have just kind of left behind. There's a coffee mug that loves to live on the deacon's table. There's all kinds of containers and serving stuff downstairs, umbrellas, jackets. So as you're wandering around, if you could just take a look and see if any of that is yours and take it home. We would greatly appreciate that. Uh, the deacons are also giving away some canning jars. They are downstairs in the fellowship hall. And so those are, uh, you're welcome to take as many as you want. Uh, if you would like to make a donation to the board of deacons, we would appreciate that as well. 
uh, a reminder about the blind dates with books. They are over there. The table is fully loaded again, so uh, feel free to take those. Also, if you enjoy reading, the book club will begin meeting again on September 11th. And the book is The Stranger in the Lifeboat by Mitch Album. And so uh, all are welcome to join that. And then in September, uh, I'll be doing a sermon series on banned books, books that have been banned. And so if you want to read any of those, uh, they are The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain. Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret by Judy Bloom. Go Tell It on the Mountain by James Baldwin and The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. So that one's going to be fun. Uh, so you are invited to read those or watch movies or whatever. Uh, and then two Sundays, two weeks from today, we will be having Worship Without Walls at Alameda Park, the Masonic shelter right by the Purple Park. So no one's going to be here. We will all be at the park uh, with some of our other Presbyterian churches in the area. Worship is at 1030, same time, just a different location. And you are invited to bring a picnic lunch and stay afterwards uh, for fellowship, but we will not be having a big potluck picnic this year. Are there any other announcements to be lifted up? Yeah, Dave. There's a rotary roll for all here, and it needs to be picked up downstairs after the service. Perfect. The Zeroni rolls are here. So after you eat all of the food that we brought for fellowship hour, then you pick up your Zeroni rolls and go home and you have dinner. Perfect. It's a good day. Any other announcements this morning? Seeing none, let us then prepare our hearts to worship God.
Please rise and body your spirit and let us join together in our responsive call to worship. Here in this place, God welcomes dreamers and doubters. Here, the warriors and wanderers can call on God by name. Here, in this time, we remember the ways God has graced us. Here, in these moments, we remember that God is always with us. Here, we are gathered, daring to step out of our comfort into the unknown. Here, in this space, we find courage to praise and to pray. Here, in this place, joined physically and virtually, let us worship God. Let us join together in our unison opening prayer. Life-giving God, we gather in your presence to offer you thanks and praise for all that you have done for us. May your Holy Spirit inspire our praise and our prayers. Open our hearts and minds to your presence among us and within us and to the word you have for us today. Amen.
The Apostle Paul assures us that when we don't know how or what to pray, the Spirit knows. When all we can muster are signs, sighs and groans, the Spirit knows those also. When we feel that we aren't even worthy to approach God, the Spirit goes before us and with us, and God welcomes us with open arms. So trusting in God's grace, let us confess our sins together by joining together in our unison prayer of confession. Holy God, we confess that we do not always love our neighbor and that we have despised others, even to the point of hatred. We confess that we have hurt and been hurt by others. We admit that forgiveness and reconciliation at times feels impossible for us, but we know that nothing is impossible in you. Help us to trust that nothing can separate us from your love and forgive the ways we can be so unloving. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, hear this prayer and hear us as we lift our silent confessions before you now. Hear our prayers, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Nothing is impossible with God. There is no place where you can go where God cannot find you. There is nothing on earth or beyond death that can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. You are forgiven. You are loved. You are reconciled to God. Know this and be at peace. Amen. <laughs> are forgiven by God brings us peace and so at this time you are invited to share the peace of Christ with those around you feel free to turn around and wave and the peace of Christ be with you at home as well joining at home you can come a little closer for a time especially for you my younger friends you're gonna come join you're gonna stay over there yeah come on good morning Anna you've gotten so grown up all this sudden I didn't even recognize you over there so who have we been talking about these past few days Mr. Rogers, Mr. Rogers. yes so two weeks ago, we talked about what it means to be a good neighbor. And who is your neighbor? Everyone. Yeah. Good. Yeah, everyone is your neighbor. Last week, what did we talk about? Coffee. Mr. Rogers. Again. Again. And we talked about feelings and how it's important to talk about our feelings and not just keep them all inside, right? Mm -hmm. Today we're going to talk about winning and losing. Now, would you rather win or lose something? Uh, win. Win. Of course. Right? Yeah. It's good to have an equal amount. It's, it is good to have an equal amount, but I prefer to win, too. <laughs> yeah. So last weekend, um, Katie was at our house, and we had a couple neighbors over as well, and they were getting ready to play Candyland. And I stopped everybody before you started playing. And do you remember what I told you? What? Only one person's going to win, right? Yeah. And so the other three people... Have to be in there at last. It's going to 
going to be two people against each other. Well, yeah, they did like ultimate elimination, yeah. But what I, but what I told you was that the other, the other three people who don't win are going to get mad and cry and stomp around? Mm -mm. No, no. They're going to celebrate the winner, right, and not get upset. Because sometimes we win and sometimes we lose. So we're going to go um, to my land of make-believe again. And I'm going to... Are there going to no, be neighbors? No, no, no. They, they helped me with one. That one's next week. Um, <clears throat> no, but we're gonna, I'm going to talk to one of my friends today in the land of make-believe about winning and losing. So if you want to come up here to the bench so we can see the big screen. We're going to be in there. Mm-hmm. Good morning, Sarah. Lately, I've been thinking a lot about winning and losing. Which one do you like better? Winning. Really? Why do you like winning better? Because it's winning. When you win, you're the best. Really? What about when you lose? When you lose, you're a loser. Yikes. That sounds pretty harsh. Well, I mean, if you lose at something, it means you're not good at it. What if you don't win, but you come in second or third? You still have to be pretty good to come in second. That's almost winning. Yeah, almost, but then you're not the best. Have you ever lost at something? <sighs> well, I mean, yeah, when I was little. I've lost at many things throughout my life. I bet the people in your life have too. I think everyone loses at some point. Well, I'm not going to. We have a big spelling bee tomorrow, and I'm going to win. Oh, wow. That's awesome. You want to know something? I have never won a spelling bee. Ha, that was stink to be you. Eh, it's okay. <laughs> I've lost at a lot of things, but I've won some things, too. I am definitely going to win the spelling bee. I'm the best speller in my class. I can't wait to beat everyone. Winning a spelling bee would be a great accomplishment. I'd be impressed if you got second or third, too. But even if you get out on the first word, you won't be a loser. You'll still be you. And I think that's pretty great. If I get out on the first word, I will be so embarrassed. The first word is usually like cat or something. I can spell much harder words. Yeah, you said you are a pretty good speller. And I'm sure you'll do great no matter what place you come in. You know you're a good speller, and that won't change. Yeah, that's true, but I still really want to win. I know, and that's great. That will help you try your best. Just remember, winning might feel good, but it doesn't mean that you are good. And losing might feel bad, but it doesn't mean that you are bad. You are you no matter if you win or lose. God made everyone and said that we are all good. You're good even if you lose every spelling bee you're ever in. God doesn't care if we lose. God will love you no matter what. So if you do lose, there's no reason to feel like you're bad. Okay, I think I get it. Even if I come in second or third or even last, I'm still a good speller and God still loves me. Exactly. And I'll still love you, too. G. T-H-A-N-K-S. <laughs> You're welcome. For those of you who have never heard Bella Heist talk, now you have. <laughs> so uh, Gabe wanted me to say, to tell everyone, that if you think you're going to win, you have a better chance of doing well, right? If you believe you can do it, then there's a better chance that you'll do it. But even if you don't win, it's okay. Because if you get second place or fifth place or last place, God still loves you because you are still you, okay? So this week, if you lose at something, if you're playing a game and you lose, remember, you're not a loser. God loves you. And so do the grown-ups in your life too, okay? Okay, can you pray? Can you repeat after me? Thank you, God, for loving us when we win and when we lose. Help us to celebrate the winners and the losers and to show everyone love. In Jesus' name we pray.
Amen. Thank you. Let us pray. As we are gathered here today, we ask you, our living God, to shower upon us your wisdom and knowledge. We pray that as we listen to your word, we may have the ability to clearly see what you have called us to do and who you have called us to be. Illuminate our eyes and reveal to us your glory. Amen. Our psalm of the day today is Psalm 105, and we will be reading verses 1 through 11 from the Common English Bible. This is a song about God's faithfulness to Israel. Listen now for God's word to us. Give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make his deeds known to all people. Sing to God. Sing praises to the Lord. Dwell on all his wondrous works. Give praise to God's holy name. Let the hearts rejoice of all those seeking the Lord. Pursue the Lord and his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wondrous works he has done, all his marvelous works, and the justice he declared. You who are the offspring of Abraham, his servant, and the children of Jacob, his chosen ones. The Lord, he is our God. His justice is everywhere throughout the whole world. God remembers his covenant forever the word he commanded to a thousand generations, which he made with Abraham, the solemn pledge he swore to Isaac. God set it up as a binding law for Jacob, as an eternal covenant for Israel, promising, I hereby give you the land of Canaan as your allotted inheritance. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our epistle reading today comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 31 through 39, and I'm reading from the Inclusive Bible. Here Paul encourages his listeners by reminding them of God's love in Christ Jesus. Listen again for God's word to us. What should be our response? Simply this. If God is for us, who can be against us? Since God did not spare the only begotten, but gave Christ up for the sake of us all, we may be certain after such a gift that God will freely give us everything. Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? Since God is the one who justifies, who has the power to condemn? Only Christ Jesus, who died, or rather was raised, and sits at the right hand of God, who now intercedes for us. What will separate us from the love of Christ? Trouble? Calamity? Persecution? Hunger? Nakedness? Danger? Violence? As scripture says, for your sake, we're being killed all day long, We're looked upon as sheep to be slaughtered. Yet in all this, we are more than conquerors because of God who has loved us. For I am certain that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, neither heights nor depths nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that comes to us in Christ Jesus our Savior. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for that reminder that you love us no matter what. There's nothing that we can say or do that would make you love us any less. Help us to carry that with us each day, to trust that you will always love us. Open our ears and our hearts and our minds to your word, and may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts gathered together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A number of years ago, David and I spent a rainy afternoon playing a game of Monopoly with my brother and a couple of our neighbors. And things seemed to be going fine, but then there was this issue with paying or not paying rent. Somebody didn't pay, I don't remember. But what I do remember is that one of our neighbors got so mad that he bolted up out of his chair, he flipped the entire table over, game pieces and fake money went flying everywhere, and then he just stormed out of the house. And the rest of us just kind of sat there for a moment in silence. We were really shocked at what happened. And then we all started laughing because a game of Monopoly is just that. It's a game. It wasn't worth getting that upset over. But sometimes in the heat of the moment, right, we, when something that we really care about or something that we've put a lot of energy into isn't going the way we want, our emotions can get the best of us. Just ask John McEnroe, who was notorious for his tantrums on the tennis court. Or Kanye West, who interrupted Taylor Swift's uh, acceptance speech at the VMA Awards, uh, MTV VMA Awards in 2009 to let the world know that he didn't think she was the right winner. Some people are just sore losers. But if we're honest, we've probably all been there, haven't we? Maybe not to that scale, but I think it's fair to say that we've all lost our cool. Losing isn't the most enjoyable experience, after all. Sometimes we we get angry, we yell or get violent. Sometimes we get really sad and we cry about our loss. It can be difficult to maintain composure when we don't win. Sometimes losing is upsetting because we are disappointed in ourselves. 
we know or at least hope that we could do better. Sometimes we don't want to lose because we don't want to feel the pain of losing. There's a 1983 episode of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood where the land of make-believe has been chosen as the host site for the make-believe Olympic Games. And Mr. Struthers, who will help out with the event, goes around and he asks each citizen for their permission to host the site, to host the games. And all of them excitedly say yes, except for Lady Elaine Fairchild. She says, I'm all for it on one condition, that I get to win. Mr. Struthers questions her, and he pushes back a little bit, and he says, well, it's not a game if you know who's going to win. And persistently, Lady Elaine says, I don't care. One thing's sure, I'll say yes if you say I'll win. Lady Elaine didn't want to feel like a loser, so she'll only participate if they can guarantee that she won't. Sometimes we selfishly avoid the emotions that come with losing. Sometimes when we lose, we are disappointed in ourselves. But perhaps, maybe even more often than not, we fear failure, we fear losing, because we think we will disappoint someone else, someone special to us. I'm reminded of the Broadway musical 25th Annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. The show is about, wait for it, the 25th Annual Putnam County Spelling Bee. It follows the experiences of the super smart yet really quirky elementary school spellers. The youngest of the group is Logan Schwarzengrubenier a spunky and outspoken 10-year-old trying to fight her way to the top amongst her 12-year-old competitors. Logan is being raised by dads who have taught her to be super competitive and to even cheat to ensure a win. In her introduction song, Woe Is Me, her dads begin by saying, we hate losers. No one likes a loser which is why we discipline. God hates losers, because losers do not know how to win. Now imagine the stress that puts on a young child to be told that you are only worthy of love if you're winning. Unfortunately, it's not fiction for so many people. And it's not just young children, either. Think of how many athletes, artists, Writers and performers of all sorts feel like a failure if they don't come out on top. I'm willing to guess that maybe some in worship today feel that way, too, sometimes. But that line from Logan's dad, Carl, God hates losers, takes it to a whole different level. It's one thing when we are disappointed in ourselves and another when we feel like we have disappointed people who are important to us. But when it feels like we've disappointed God, well, nothing causes us to question our self-worth or our belovedness like that. But Carl is wrong, very wrong. While God may at times be disappointed by our behavior, God does not hate losers. God does not hate, period. And even if God were the hateful sort, Scripture makes it pretty clear that it is those whom others consider to be losers that we are especially called to love. There's no need to fear not being the best. No one can be the best all the time. In the PBS Kids Mr. Rogers show spinoff show, Don Quixote, Donkey and her friend Panda Pal join the Tri Scouts, where they earn badges for trying and succeeding at really difficult things. And mission after mission, Donkey and Panda 
feel like giving up because it's just too hard. They keep making mistakes. They can't figure it out. But their Tri-Scout leader, Harriet Elizabeth Cow, sings them a song to encourage them to keep going. She sings, it's okay to fail because that is when we learn and try and try again. If you try and don't succeed, you'll get something that you need. At this point, Donkey and Panda join in singing something to help, something to know, something that will help us grow. It's okay to fail. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to lose. Because whether we win or lose or finish somewhere in between, God loves us. Whether we are happy or sad, mad or content, God loves us. No matter our stage in life, our educational status, our political affiliation, our past actions, our state of health, God loves us. Full stop. For as Paul says in his letter to the church in Rome, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, neither heights nor depths, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from God's love. Nothing in all creation can separate us from God's love. Nothing. Because God created us, and God made us good. Because God has promised to abide with us always and guide us along the way. Because God loves us so much that God came in the form of Jesus to prove it. Now, there were and still are many people who consider Jesus a loser. And we know how God feels about him. In the same way, God loves us. So as you go throughout this week, you will make mistakes. You may fail at something or even lose. And when, not if, when you do, remember the words of Mr. Rogers, who said whether you're first or middle or last, what's important is that you're you. And people can like you just the way you are. And know that God feels that way about you, too. Thanks be to God. Amen. God calls us to love our neighbors, all of them, and shows us what is good. May all that we have and all that we give be used in the service of love, justice, and peace. To financially support the mission and ministry of Hill Church, you are invited to place your offerings in the plates near the entrances, drop them off during the week, mail them to the church, or give electronically. Please rise and body your spirit as we join together in our unison prayer of dedication. Let us pray. Merciful God, there are no winners and losers in your eyes, and for that we are grateful. As we trust that nothing can separate us from your love, may our offerings be used to proclaim this truth to all. Use them and us in your service. Amen. We come together now to share our joys and our concerns so that we can be in prayer for and with one another. This morning we pray for Taylor Hess and his family at the passing of his wife, Jane Kirkpatrick Hess, who I think some of you may know. 
on July 24th. And if you do know them, uh, we have Taylor's phone number and address. If you'd like to send your condolences, you can contact the church office for that. We uh, pray for Annabelle Brunemer, who's a friend of Ann Miller's. She fell and broke some vertebrae in her neck and also a bone in her back. And so we pray for healing for her. We also lift up Chris, who is a good friend of Arlene uh, for a long, long time. I won't say how many years, Arlene. Uh, he has been diagnosed with tonsil cancer. And yeah, and the prognosis is good, but uh, there'll be radiation and chemo. Uh, but he now has shingles. And so treatment is being pushed off until he can recover from shingles. And so we pray for Chris uh, and his family. What a mess. We lift up two-year-old Jack, who is the nephew of Nick Bartley. Nick is a friend of this congregation. Um, Jack had a possible seizure while at the farm show this week and had to be life-flighted to Children's. And he's, he's home, but will have to undergo further testing. So we pray for Jack and for his parents and for their doctors. We also lift up those we love who are living with cancer and chronic health concerns. We especially pray, continue to pray for Lynn Gehring, who is at Concordia recovering from surgery. We pray for those we love who are homebound or living in nursing homes or care facilities. We especially lift up Donna Scoville and Phyllis Lane. And if you know them, feel free to give them a call or send them a card. They would appreciate it. We pray for Carol Gadsby's daughter, Kelly, who is having a number of uh, health concerns. We also continue to pray for Allie, a friend of our congregation, as she's recovering from a lot of illnesses and uh, still not quite there. We give thanks that Sharon Montag is recovering from knee replacement surgery. Six days out, she's here. <laughs> she made it. <laughs> yes, so continued prayers. Uh, for recovery for you. We also uh, celebrate with Karen Bryson. Her granddaughter Hannah got engaged, and so she's got beautiful pictures of the ring if you want to see it. She's very excited. And we also celebrate with Jamie Lynn and her family at the safe delivery of a new great niece, Jocelyn Natalie. Is it Lee? Lee. Yes, so yay. Marriage, new life, it's exciting. Today we also give thanks for those who have accepted the call to serve as officers and as committee members of the church, and you'll hear more about that in just a moment. But first, are there any other joys or concerns to share this morning? I'm gonna, I'm gonna have you talk in the mic just so the people at home can hear you. I know we can hear you here. Uh, 46 years ago, on August the 14th, the Reverend C. Kenneth Hall married a young Dan McKnight and Sue Everhart in his very church. He instilled in us at that time that the church and God should be an integral part of our lives, and it has been, and my love for her is even stronger now than it was 46 years ago. Oh, congratulations. I would be crying if I were you, Sue. <laughs> congratulations, happy anniversary. Other joys or concerns to lift up this morning? Okay. Hearing none, then we're going to change gears a little bit, and uh, we're going to enter into a time of congregational meeting. So I will call this meeting to order. I don't have a gavel, but I'm going to call the meeting to order. Um, Madam Clerk, do we have a quorum? We do have a quorum. Uh, and so then I would invite... Kathleen Davis forward to give a report from the nominating committee and to present the slate. Uh, for those of you here in person in your bulletin, you have the names of all the nominees and it'll be on a slide uh, as well. And Kathleen will read them also. Good morning. This year's nominating committee, the elected nominating committee of Barb Graham, Susan Catanzarito, Kelly Provident, Kathy Neville, Jamie Lynn Brady, and myself under the very able direction of our chair, Elder Nancy Doherty, met frequently, and we sincerely sought 
the direction of the Holy Spirit as we try to fill the positions available for this year. And so we happily, happily present the following people. We, we struggled with what our leadership needs will be as the future emerges, but we tabled that and set it aside just to present you this list of elders. Um, and it's not a game, so, so if, if you don't happen to win election, don't worry, because we just had this great sermon about that. You know. But here's who we think will be our, our, our new leaders for next year. The elders for the class of 2025, we place in nomination Jerry Graham, Jim Kamer, Arlene Roth. The deacons for the class of 2025, Barb Kamer, Marsh Miller, and Kyle Neville. And the nominating committee at large members, class of 2023, David Benish, Barb Graham, Kathy Neville, and Betty Scarnato. So we are happy to bring this slate from the nominating committee. Thank you. So you have received the nominations from the nominating committee. At this time, are there any other nominations from the floor? Nobody wants to step up. We need a stewardship elder. So you can pray about it. If stewardship is your thing, uh, feel free to talk to us. Hearing no further nominations, is there a motion then to close the nominations? Is there a second? Beautiful, thank you. Um, since we're doing this in a hybrid model, uh, we'll, we'll vote, and then I will give the people at home a chance to, to speak up as well. Um, I do a lot of Presbyterian meetings on Zoom, and they never call for our vote, and it makes me so frustrated. So, uh, you have received the slate of elders, deacons, and nominating committee members. For those of you who are here, all in favor of this slate, say aye. Anyone opposed, say no. Okay. And for those of you at home as well, uh, feel free in the chat or you can you know, raise your hand and wave at the camera. Um, give me a thumbs up if you agree, and we'll give them a few seconds. And so you can you know, tell a joke to your neighbor or something while we wait. I see thumbs up and a sleeping puppy, which is beautiful. There's about a 30 second lag on Facebook, so hang tight. This is a very contentious election. I don't know if you noticed. All right, hearing the votes uh, in person and seeing the votes online, I will declare that the uh, slate has been passed. Thank you very much. Those of you who were just elected, can you stand up for a second so we can see you? Thank you. Is there a motion to adjourn? Got you, Pete. Is there a second? All right. Thank you. Pete is always my motion to adjourn. He's my guy. Uh, at this point, then, I would invite forward uh, our new elders and deacons, Arlene, Barb, Jerry, Jim, and Marsh, for a time of installation. Come on up so everybody at home can see you, too. Come on. Yeah. Oh, you're going so far back there. <laughs> the Apostle Paul tells us that there are a variety of gifts, but it is the same Spirit who gives them. There are different ways of serving God, but it is the same Lord who is served. God works through each person in a unique way, but it is God's purpose that is accomplished. To each is given a gift of the Spirit to be used for the common good. Together, we are the body of Christ and individually members of it. We are called into the Church of Jesus Christ by baptism and marked as Christ's own by the Holy Spirit. This is our common calling to be disciples of Jesus Christ and servants of our Lord. Within the community of the church, some are called to particular service as deacons and elders and as ministers of word and sacrament. Ordination is Christ's 
gift to the church, assuring that his ministry will continue among us. Through ordination, God provides for acts of care and compassion in the world, for the ordering and governance of the church, and for the preaching of the word and the celebration of the sacraments. Representing the one holy and apostolic church, the session of Hill United Presbyterian Church now installs to active service in this congregation those who have been previously ordained, deacons Barb Kamer, Marsh Miller, and Kyle Neville, and ruling elders Jerry Graham, Jim Kamer, and Arlene Roth. Thank you. And Kyle could not be here today, uh, but he's here in spirit with us. As God calls some to particular forms of ministry, God calls us all to gladly claim our identity in Christ given in the covenant of baptism. And so you are invited now to rise and body your spirit as we renounce, as we reaffirm our baptismal vows, renouncing all that opposes God and God's rule, and affirming the faith of the Holy Catholic Church as we join together in our responsive profession of faith. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? I do. I do. Do you turn to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? I do. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? I will. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, with joy, we give you thanks and praise. We praise you for leading your people Israel through the waters of the sea, out of bondage and into freedom in the land of your promise. We praise you for sending Jesus, your son, who for us was baptized in the waters of the Jordan and was anointed as the Christ by your Holy Spirit. Through the baptism of his death and resurrection, you set us free from the bondage of sin and death and give us cleansing and rebirth. We praise you for pouring out your Holy Spirit, who teaches us and leads us in all truth, filling us with a variety of gifts that we may proclaim the gospel to all nations and serve you as a royal priesthood. We rejoice that you have claimed us in our baptism and anointed us for service in Christ's name and that by your grace we are born anew. By your Holy Spirit, renew us that we may be empowered to do your will and continue forever in the risen life of Christ to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be on glory and honor, now and forever. Amen. Marsh, Jerry, Arlene, Barb, and Jim. Come on, scoot up, come on. <laughs> there we go. In baptism, you were claimed by the love of God clothed in the grace of Jesus Christ and anointed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit to share Christ's mission in the world. You have been called by God, once again, through the voice of the church for service and ministry in Jesus' name. Each time you are ordained or installed, and they all have been ordained before, you answer a set of questions, as do I. All of the questions you are asked 
are the same. Pastors, elders, and deacons all answer the same questions, except for one, which is specific to your office. There is no hierarchy of ordination. As officers and leaders in the church, we work together for the ministry of Christ. So, in accordance with the Constitution of the Presbyterian Church USA, please show your commitment to this calling once again by answering the following questions. You've got your cheat sheet there if you need it, but I will prompt you for the answers. Do you trust in Jesus Christ, your Savior, acknowledge him Lord and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Do you? Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testament to be, by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness of Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you? Do you? Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith, as expressed in the confessions of the church, as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do, and will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God? Do you and will you? I do. Oh, they're good. <laughs> will you fulfill your ministry in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of Scripture and be continually guided by our confessions? Will you? I will. Will you be governed by our church's polity and will, will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them, subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? Will you? Amen. Will you, in your own life, seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? Will you? Amen. Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? Do you? And my favorite, will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? Will you? I will. And now for the elders, Jerry, Jim, and Arlene. Will you be a faithful ruling elder, watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in government and discipline, serving in the councils of the church, and in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? I will. There you go. <laughs> and to our deacons, Barb and Marsh, will you be a faithful deacon, teaching charity, urging concern, and directing help to the friendless and those in need? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? Mm, there we go. These questions are for the congregation. Do we, the members of the church, accept Arlene, Kyle, Marsh, Barb, Jim, and Jerry as ruling elders and deacons, chosen by God through the voices of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ? Do we? We do. Do we agree to pray for them, to encourage them, to respect their decisions, and to follow as they guide us? serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church. Do we? We do. So normally, the laying on of hands is only for ordination, but I like to break the rules a little bit because I love the laying on of hands. It's one of my favorite things. And so you are invited if you want to step down to the floor level. And anyone who has ever been ordained as an elder, a deacon, or a minister of word and sacrament in the PCUSA, please come forward as we lay hands on our new officers and pray for them. Sharon, I'll give you a pass. <laughs> this is why I love this. Look. We have all answered the call to serve in a variety of ways. What a beautiful thing. 
feel the weight on your shoulders. It's a weight of responsibility, but also the weight of God's love and grace. Let us pray together. Eternal God, we give you thanks for your steadfast faithfulness to us. In every age, you have called forth leaders to serve and equipped them with your gifts. Among your people Israel, you anointed prophets, priests, and rulers. With Moses, the 70 elders bore the burdens of your people. Alongside the apostles, deacons cared for those in need and guarded the community's peace. And in the church, deacons, elders, and pastors serve together so that your whole people might be equipped for ministry and built up into the full unity of Christ. For your servants in every age, O God, and for the church of Jesus Christ, we give you all thanks and praise. God of grace, pour out your Holy Spirit on Jerry, Barb, Jim, Marsh, Kyle, and Arlene that they may be faithful deacons and elders in the church. Give them openness to the Holy Spirit's leading, that they may see and serve wherever there is a need. Guide them in prayer, that they may express the compassion of Christ. Equip them with courage to bear the gospel and to communicate your presence and might to those who are powerless. In everything, give them the mind of Christ, who did not grasp at greatness, but emptied himself to become a servant of your reign. Give them joy in their walk of faith and a sense of your abiding presence for their work of ministry. And gracious God, pour out your spirit of power and truth upon the whole church, that we may be for you a holy people, baptized to serve you in the world. Sustain this congregation in ministry Ground us in the gospel, secure our hope in Christ, strengthen our service to the outcast, and increase our love for one another. Show us the transforming power of your grace, that we may be servants of the gospel, offering a compelling witness in the world to the good news of Christ Jesus our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Jim, Barb, Arlene, Jerry, Marsh, and Kyle. You are now officially installed as deacons and elders, ordained to the ministries of service and governance in the Church of Jesus Christ and for this congregation. Be faithful and true in your ministry so that your whole life will bear witness to the crucified and risen Christ. Thank you. Let's congratulate them. And as you disperse, uh, we will sing our closing hymn together.
friends, as you leave this time of worship, you leave one holy space for another. May you see the face of God in each person you meet. May you never question whether someone is or is not your neighbor. And may you remember that absolutely nothing can separate you from God's love. In the name of the triune God, source of being, word made flesh, spirit of love, go in peace and serve others with joy. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God that will never let you go and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and every day. Amen.